Hey guys, today is fertilization day. Um, we have now hit the spot that our weather for the next 14 days, and it looks great, won't go below mid 50s during the day and 40, maybe 39 one night. So that's 14 days. And so I'm going to get out here, get fertilizing all my um, uh, specimen plants in pots, my perennial border, my roses, just fertilizing everything. And then uh, they'll be ready for mulch when I'm ready. So we're going to get started up here on the deck. And it's going to rain. So I'm very lucky. I won't have to water any of this in. It's going to rain uh, tomorrow night. Not It could rain tonight, but tomorrow night for sure. Anyhow, as long as you have rain coming, you don't have to water it in. But you're in an area where you don't get rain, you want to water your fertilizers in. This is a slow release. I'm using Espoma products today. I'm not uh, paid by them, but I've been using the organics. I go to for those who live locally, plant the seed cells, your plant tone, your rose tone, your holly tone, any kind of tone, like the man said today, monotone. <laughs> he was singing some song. I love it. Anyhow, he lives locally and he's been gardening over 50 years and all of his vegetables are organically grown and he's been using these Espoma products. So I've been, I try and buy locally from him and, uh, He's great and knowledgeable. So stop in and see him. But anyhow, I'm using... Um, so what was the name of the store? I don't think you mentioned Plant it. the Seed. Oh, yeah, Plant the Seed. Plant the Seed out on Route uh, uh, 33. 33 on the right-hand side. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, so what we're going to do, anything that's in specimen pots today need to be fertilized. And because I have a small uh, garden, I have several specimen pots. And this is a my dappled willow, which is a deciduous tree and shrub. And your plant tone, which I'm using today... It's good for uh, your deciduous trees and shrubs. It's great for your perennial border. It's, it's great for your lawn. It's, it's an all-purpose uh, fertilizer. It, um, I'm using rose tone on the roses because it's a little less nitrogen. And nitrogen produces a little more of a leafy growth. And your um, phosphorus and potassium is for your flowers and for the stems for strength. And if you look at the um, fertilizers for the rose tone you may see that they're a little higher in your your um potassium and your potassium and phosphorus and the nitrogen's a little lower than what you find in plant tone but if you have nothing else plant tone can be used on all your flowering vegetables and i'm just using it so anyhow we're going to give um all of my uh potted uh plants about a cup full my hand equals a half a cup i have measured it so we're going to give this i did um go ahead and stir up the mulch i'm not going to uncover the mulch there's no need to the rain will just um water it right in and so this is how easy it's going to be i'm giving everything today it's fertilizer and i have weeded i keep saying you know it's important when you start this whole process in the spring to be out weeding early, which I've been doing, you know, whenever the weather's been nice. And then you're ready to fertilize and then you're ready to put the mulch down. This is the rose tone. And I'm going to use a cup and a quarter for it. And this is good for hydrangea. So this is my PG hydrangea. And I read that it's great for your hydrangeas, your clematis, your roses. Um, and so I'm going to be using it today on my clematis, my roses, and my hydrangeas. All of these flowering tree, shrubs and vines, a little bit more. And what I will do too on my roses, my hydrangeas, after the roses have their first flush, because mine are repeat bloomers, I will probably the middle of June give them another um, fertilization of the rose tone. Same thing with the hydrangeas mid season. No later than July, I'm going to fertilize these again. Everything else that's getting plant tone won't get any more fertilizer till next spring. So with right here, the last thing on the deck that I want to fertilize is my one fruit shrub is my, my blueberry. I don't have any apple trees, but this blueberry, I bought this because it says it's for blueberries. I am not a blueberry expert, but I've had this tree for five years and it produces tons of blueberries. So this is getting a cup. Yeah, as long as the birds don't get them. Yeah, you have to. If you, you Anyone who has a blueberry bushes, raspberry bushes, 
for any kind of fruit uh, bearing bush, you know that uh, the, the birds know when it's ready to eat. So once the fruits develop and they start ripening, I throw a, um, you know, bird netting over this, but it produces and produces and they're delicious. So this gets it, this will get fertilized now. And this also will get fertilized again, probably the middle of June. And then that's the last time right before it fruits, it will get fertilized again. Um, so that is for your blueberries. And you can use this. This is, oh, what am I using actually? It's an azalea, camellia, and rhododendron plant, plant food, but it includes blueberries. So anyhow, there's that. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to head down to the lower level, and I'm going to um, do some peonies. Now, when it comes to peonies, and you can see, look, they're, they've started coming through the ground. They don't require a lot of fertilization, um, and they, they can survive just with some compost on them. These are old, old plants that I've divided from so many homes. And like they say, you can find these in graveyards along the roadside, old uh, home sites where they've fallen down and they still bloom. But I like to treat my plants as I would if you lived with me. I would nurture you <laughs> like I treat my cats and my husband. I like to feel like, you know, I cannot not give them what they need. And so a little bit of compost on and around the soil about an inch and that keeps them happy and you can always tell if your plants aren't happy if they aren't blooming for you you know if they're not getting enough sunlight you'll be able to tell but the compost i love and i you know this is my compost you could also probably um throw some plant home but i'm just going to use the compost that's what i've always used that's what I'm going to use. And uh, what I've done in this bed, the only other thing I'm going to fertilize today is my uh, clematis. My, um, that's, what is that? That's carnaby. 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 So carnaby is going to get some rose tone. Carnaby's looking pretty shabby right now. Well, shoot. It's been cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carnaby hasn't started showing shines of anything, but I'm going to go ahead and put fertilizer all around Carnaby. Get everything fertilized, and then when it starts growing, here in the next 14 days, with all of that sunshine and warmth, we're going to have some 70 degree temperatures. Trust me, it will perk right up. And Carnaby is a plant that grows on new and old wood which um, depends on, I go by green, yellow, and red. Red are the clematis that you, they grow on old wood and you prune cautiously only after they bloom. This is yellow because it blooms on new and old. Here's some new growth, Reg, at the top. Okay. And so you can prune this uh, a little bit without harming it. And green, of course, is like Jack Mania. You can cut it down to 18 inches or to the ground and uh, you, it comes back on all new wood. This, this grows all new and old, so it can take a little more pruning than the red. I don't have any red clematis because I don't want to have to deal with that. There's that. All right, so everything else, my hellebores have all been fertilized with compost earlier this winter. Nothing else needs to be fertilized. It's just that type of soil. The one thing about my soil is I do have um, great soil that I also mulch and the mulch creates not only a weed barrier, a moisture retention, but as it decomposes, it nourishes your soil. So we're going to go down and finish. Well, let's do one more thing. This pot here. Let's put a little plant tone in it. Right there on the deck. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I forget about, I, when you, you know, I walk past these plants all the time and I forget about these plants because they grow so well. This Arborvita, I don't know how many years it's been in this pot, Reg. Oh, a long time. At least five or more. Yeah. And uh, it gets a little fertilizer. That's it. I do nothing special. So we're going to head down to the perennial border. Yeah, you can see from the frozen water on the pond, 
We've had a really cold weekend, but we're done. We are out of it. Anyhow, I'm here by Sarah Elizabeth, and I am going to... Um, now, Sarah Elizabeth is what? Oh, she's my... Um, a clematis. Clematis, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to give her some of the rose tone right here by her. You can see her leafing out, too. And I'm right here by my lovely, lovely iceberg climbing rose leafing out. We got her all. Yeah, she's got a nice haircut there, she? got she? a great haircut. And I'm noticing my oregano. Um, this is called Kent's, Kent's Beauty Oregano. Look at that. It's perennial. It's coming back. It flowers real pretty. I got that from uh, Three Little Buds Workshop last year. She sent us with all kinds of nice plants. Seeds. There's a weed. Let's pull it out. If you aren't weeding, get weeding. It's going to get hot soon. And, okay, that's the rose in there. Um, I'm going to be giving all my um, boxwood some plant tone. So I'll be throwing a handful of plant tone all around the boxwood. Just like that. And I have a clematis and a rose back here. We're just moving right along, people. I love it. And Mozart's with us. I know. And he found out. Now, people, if you have pets, I know dogs will try and eat the plant tone, but Mozart just tried it and he spit it out, right, Reg? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he went running looking for something. To so this is Jack Manny Eye, and you can see him coming up from where he was cut way back. He's getting some rose tone, and uh, you know you want to spread it. You've got to realize that the roots of your plants aren't here; they're outside of the the plant itself. So you want to move your plant uh, food, your organic food at least, you know, six inches away from your plants, so you know you're getting it on the root system. And over here is my uh, Zephyrin Druin Rose, who got a haircut, leafing out nicely. Oh, and, I see it now, uh, yeah. I know. And I was down here earlier and was messing up her soil a little bit. And we'll get that just like that. And I will give my roses, as I said, they will get another boost of rose tone after their first flush, which could be the middle of June. And while we're down here, I looked at my uh, red bud, and I can see buds popping out on it. Oh, that's a good time. I know. So that my eastern red bud will get to see it bloom. Right in front of you, Reg, are the hostas, and the hostas all get compost. I just, I didn't bring my shovel, but I'm just going to sprinkle it. But can you see how they're breaking through the ground? Yeah. So I'm just going to throw compost on my hostas, just like I do my peonies. Plus this bed, I don't usually put a lot of mulch on it. The leaves become the mulch. This bed is- You get a lot of leaves from the willow tree as well. Yeah, that's why. And so the ferns and um, I basically just, put the, this compost along this part of the border because the um, these hostas give a real pretty show and they dry. This will help keep them from drying out so much. I don't worry about the hostas that are back in the main bed because they're a little more shaded and uh, they have a lot more leaf mulch on them. So I do this to the whole border. It's so easy. And it gives it a, ni a nice look, too. All right. So there's the hostas. You didn't do this boxwood, and I want to tell you why. Because the cats are the there. Cats, oh, uh, I saw rip rips back underneath there. it, yeah. No, I'll be doing all the boxwoods the same. There's a cat hiding under that bunch. And uh, if you pan around here, Reg, the repetition will happen. I will take compost and compost all these hostas that are coming up. You can see how pretty they look. And my um, boxwoods in that corner. 
I have two more roses. We're going to get those done, but you can see rips out from under there now, but I will hold off throwing any <laughs> rose tone around. You're the crazy cat lady, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. They seem to well, follow you around. If you feed them, they will come. <laughs> I think you started all that. <laughs> and they're friends with the cat. And the last thing I'll do today, too, you can see that my um, tulips are coming up, and I don't want the deer here. So I'm going to spray everything on this nice sunny day. It's going to be sunny tomorrow so that the deer don't come in and uh, eat them while I have them. But this is my... Uh, oh a knockout rose that pretty double peachy color and it is starting to leaf out so it's getting it and some of this i don't have a oh i do have clem i'm glad you saw that i forgot about the clematis oh, back okay. here reg yay i would have forgotten about this and this is um shoot i forget yeah, i forget the, the name of it too i forget the name of it it's a pretty white one yeah. with a little purple center and so it does real well and you can that. see it's also a, a type two it grows on new and old it's starting to leaf and what you do with this type once it's all leafed out then you can cut out the dead once you see where it's leafing and where it's not you can see this has started back here yeah so you don't want to cut too hard on these. You cut off the blooms. It's uh, you. It's just simple. I love. It was in the horticulture magazine that I can't think of the name of the horticulturalist. I like the yellow, the green, yellow, and red. And then type one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever. Here's a rose right here. This is a sweet little bonica shrub rose. I don't know how old this one is. And it's still it surviving. Tight little flowers on that. They're just sweet. Yeah, it's very sweet small, little pink petite. roses. Yeah. But that's it that I'm going to do today. I may go ahead and just cast some plant tone just all over the bed, not individually. Just what we're doing is with the rest of the garden, I am just feeding the soil. And that's what you do with any organic uh, fertilizer. You feed the soil so that all the, the little nutrients, micronutrients under there and the organisms, they then feed the roots of your plants that keep them nice and healthy. And if you're in your garden, as we all are, you'll notice if you're seeing yellowing of leaves or browning of leaves or discoloration or the, the, the um, plant isn't holding its head up like it should or it's not flowering like it should. You know, that's when you need to figure out what's causing it. But in the spring of the year, give everything a little something and you'll feel better. And the last thing I'll do this spring is put some mulch down and it's exciting. We can just go plant. That's what I might do this afternoon. So thanks for watching, fertilizing the gardens. It's spring. Thanks for watching, bye.